<laughs> you know who it is, and you know what time it is. Time to piss off some feminist trad cucks and whoever don't want to know the truth. Oh well, let's get started. Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Allah. Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! What is going on, gents? It's RPM here, reporting from Mobile Command. By now, you've all heard of the GQ massive hit piece that was done against MGTOW. Now, originally, I had no plans to actually talk about it because personally, I deemed it unworthy. However, Neo the Outflanker wanted to get my opinion on it. So, as any good DJ or content creator will do, I will honor the request. Now, this article, I'm not even going to say it's an article because it's not an article, was published on the 20th of February. Now, before we get into this uh, toxic word soup of a hit piece, let's take a quick look at the author, shall we? Tony Victor Parsons, born November 6th, 1953, age 67. So, automatically, this guy is so far removed from what the modern man is going through that this whole hit piece should be taken with the grain of salt that it should be. So, for context, this guy is what the line of MGTOW will call a severe gray beard. Now let's get into this hit piece, shall we? The men going their own way movement. Already, already, no. That shows you that he did not do the proper research. It's the Taliban of the Manosphere. Durka Durka Muhammad Jihad. <laughs> wow. Wow. To compare MGTOW to the Taliban, that is one of the cheapest shots I have seen towards MGTOW. Ironically, MGTOW, of all the groups, have the cleanest hands, and I'll go into detail later. Out on the wildest shores of the Manosphere, they talk constantly about the red pill and the blue pill, derived from a scene in the Matrix. Taking the blue pill lets you live your life in blissful ignorance of the monstrous realities of the wicked world, while taking the red pill opens your eyes and reveals the awful truth. Uh, yeah. But I like what he said. Blissful ignorance. No, at this point, it's called willful ignorance. Dream world or real world, it's your choice. As rebel leader Morpheus explained it to Neo in 1999. You take the blue pill, the story ends, you wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. Yeah, that is the overwhelming majority of society. They've buried their heads in the sand and said, I just want to go along to get along. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Oh yeah, that is true. But out in the manosphere, far too often a digital sewer for 50,000 shades of misogyny. Taking the red pill means a guy has opened his eyes to the quote-unquote bitter truth about women. 
it starts with women. But then as you progress, you see society as a whole is the real puppet master. Women are just the avenue through which society enacts its actual misandrist ideas and ideologies and laws onto who? The everyday average man. Namely, women are not simply pieces of meat. Women are pieces of poisoned meat that will lie about you, end your career, suck your bank account dry, wreck your life, and send you to a cell with some other blameless soul that got on the wrong side of the sisters, like that nice Harvey Weinstein. Um, wow. Talk about absolute conflation and deflection. Now, insofar as Harvey Weinstein, it's recently come out that some of the people who um, accused him of bad things dropped their cases once they got a financial payout. So, as we all know, it was never about him. It was about getting to the bag. He was just the vehicle to get past, to get to said bag. Ironic, isn't it? If these women were truly wanting justice, they would not take the payout. Just saying, just saying. The red pill represents a new phase in online misogyny. Oh boy. Wrote Donna Zuckerberg, author of Not All Dead White Men. Red pill believers say Zuckerberg, quote unquote, not only mock and belittle women, they also believe that our society's men are oppressed by women. Um, two things, divorce court, family court, which have uh, no constitutional rights afforded to the men when they walk in. How is that not oppression? But of course, they don't talk about things like this. Why? Because the narrative has to be spun at all costs. See, no one ever asks why men go their own way, why men take the red pill. And when men try to explain the logical reasons, it all becomes blah, blah, blah. I don't want to hear it. Yada, yada, yada. Man up. Da, 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 da. You need to continue to serve and don't question anything. From the incels, involuntarily celibates. Now, here is where I give two great examples as to why MGTOWs have the cleanest hands. Alec Manassian, the Canadian incel killer who was found guilty of murder over the Toronto van attack to the pickup artist, the PUAs. Pickup artist at Nan Ahmed, aka Addy A, was jailed for two years for threatening behavior. And that article was published back in uh, 2019, October of 2019. Nobody on the Manosphere is quite obsessed with the red pill concept as the boys in MGTOW. Woo! Yeah who aspire to live their lives without contact with women. The MGTOW, who achieve total enlightenment, are said to be going monk, which does what it says in the 10. Going monk is the black belt in giving up on women. See, once again, he's completely wrong in his assessment. And the next paragraph shows the blatant contradiction. Now, yes, the PUA community has a huge black eye on it with um, Addy A Day. And of course, the incel killers. So, here's the big difference between those two groups 
MRAs, and MGTOW. The incels, PUAs, and you know MRAs, they still rely on female validation. See, this is why MGTOW gets so many hit pieces written against it because the overwhelming majority of men who said, you know what, I'm just gonna go my own way. They decide they don't need female validation. If a woman comes, she comes. If not, oh well. The incels, they desperately want female attention. Pickup artists, they still want female attention, a validation. Not to the point of incels because they are actually able to be successful sometimes. And then you have the MRAs who are still trying to negotiate a fair deal in the court system. See, MGTOW, on the other hand, it says it right in the acronym, men going their own way. It is an individualistic philosophy. There are no leaders. You can't point out and say, well, you know, hey, that guy is the MGTOW leader. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. But once again, if uh, journalists actually did proper research, they would understand this. But anyway, some MGTOW have platonic relationships with women. But wait, but wait, you said in your previous paragraphs that MGTOWs don't want women, don't like women, can't get women. Blatant contradiction while others keep transactions strictly commercial with sex workers. But what you notice about all of them is that they never stop talking about women. Um, You never stop pointing out a problem if the problem is not going to be fixed. So what is it that uh, feminists do? Oh, yeah, that's right. See, that's right. For every person who says that MGTOW are male feminists, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. mm -mm. See, feminist has government backing. Feminist has lobbyists. Feminist has the legal system backing it. MGTOW, on the other hand, don't. As a matter of fact, MGTOW really don't need it because as long as you're willing to say, you know what, I'm going to go over here and do my own thing. That's it. I'm not going to participate in the rigged system. We know the system is rigged. So why should we help it by participating? Hmm. Keep going with this hit piece. Men sharing their lives with girlfriends, wives, and daughters never devote this much time to thinking about, talking about, and obsessing about women. See, once again, it's this whole, well, you know, you guys need to stop talking about women because if you have a woman in your life, then you wouldn't have time to worry about that. See, that was the old model of doing things. However, we have this thing called the internet. At first glance, the official Men Going Their Own Way website looks like a cross between a trailer for an action movie and a cry for help. Ejecting silly preconceptions and cultural definitions of what a man is promises the MGTOW mission statement, refusing to bow, serve, and kneel for the opportunity to be treated like a disposable utility. Fair enough. And for a moment, you can imagine a digital universe where men are uplifted by sharing the secrets of their soul. But it took, oh, about 90 seconds for MGTOW to turn this brother's stomach. Um, no, we would not classify you as a brother. You are a turncoat. You are a gray beard. You have absolutely 
no clue what's going on in today's society. See, I've said this before and it bears repeating. A lot of these old gray beards are stuck in the time frame where they started being successful with women. Yeah. And then they want all other men to be like, well, you know what? If you should follow my example because I'm successful with women. It's not even about that. It goes far beyond being just about women. But of course, that's the easy way to try to shame men who've gone their own way. A few sad, embittered losers talk about being completely um, one-sided and biased. In a dusty nuke of the internet, if only, one MGTOW vlogger has more than 90 million views for his YouTube videos. And obviously, he's talking about Sandman here, including criticize her and she will destroy your career. While that glossy MGTOW website has knocking on for 800,000 replies to more than 50,000 anti-women topics, that's a lot of misogynistic madcaps. But yet, these guys turncoats like this never want to talk about the misandry, the blatant misandry that goes on with society that's outright pushed. We don't want to talk about that because we want to keep our jobs. Yeah. MGTOW resemble men's rights activists more than incels and PUAs. Once again, no. MGTOWs are guys who have said I'm comfortable watching it burn. Now, I'm going to say something that's really going to set this whole thing off. At 16 minutes and 55 seconds, red-pilled MGTOW men are better feminists than actual feminists. Yeah, I said it. And I'm going to say that one more again. True red pill men and MGTOW are better feminists than actual feminists. Why? Because of our actions. We are actually willing to give women the equality in outcome by removing ourselves from the equation and with being able to say one simple word, no. Oh yeah, oh yeah. See, we can tell women no and stand on our square. If a woman asks us to do something, we can tell them, listen, it's an equal society. You want this done, you get it done. But see, that's another reason why MGTOW are considered so dangerous by other groups. It's because we're willing to actually give the women said equality. If we're not there, they got to do it themselves. If we tell them, no, we're not going to help them. Guess what? They got to pull their big girl panties up. With that being said, let's go ahead and keep on going. Laura Bates, author of Men Who Hate Women. Hey, I remember that book. Both groups believe that women pose an immediate threat to all men, which if they have the gun of the state and the court of public opinion at their beck and call, they do. MRAs believe women are so unfaithful and untruthful that they often force men to raise other men's children, thus financially cuckolding them. Um, no, 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 no. Why is it that we have a um 33%, you know, 
fraternity fraud statistic. And I'm pretty sure that number is higher. But will she mention that? Of course not. Of course not. MGTOW believed that women are so extremely likely to make false accusations of sexual and domestic violence in order to damage them socially, steal their money, or even have them jailed. And once again, how many men have fallen victim to this? A woman simply saying, J'accuse, and pointing their finger. And at the minimum, there's an army of white knights ready to pounce on him without even knowing his side of the story. But once again, they don't want to say anything about that. <sighs> but the MGTOW and the men who lap up their vicious woman-hating crap are more than another catchphrase or catchy Manosphere acronym, excuse me. They tap into genuine terror of men who have spent their formative years watching women through distorted mirrors of pornography who have consumed far too much music where women are routinely referred to as bitches and who crucially see in the Me Too movement not a brave new world where sexual bullies finally get their punishment they deserve but a world where women are always believed. Um, yeah, that is true. That's true. Believe all women, anyone. Yeah. Yeah. This video has gone on long enough because that's about all I truly can stomach from this article. But yeah, um, Neo, hopefully that was a good enough reaction. But you guys can read the rest of this article. Of course, I'm going to put it in the description box. But all in all, it's the same crap. Now, there was a video that I saw, you know, Red Pill versus MGTOW. There is no Red Pill versus MGTOW. <laughs> anyone's trying to make that argument fly truly do not understand taking the red pill is simply accepting the truth about women and society MGTOW is only one path after you fully take the red pill and accept it so there should be no red pill versus MGTOW. Period. All MGTOW have taken the red pill. The red pill is just the door. MGTOW is just one of the doors afterwards. End of. So, yeah. A lot of these guys who might claim to be red pill truly don't understand it if they're trying to get this whole MGTOW versus red pill thing. No, 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 no. Every MGTOW had to take the red pill. So hopefully that does not become a big issue. Another way to keep the entirety of the manosphere divided. And of course, there are other forces at play who think that there should be a black manosphere and a white manosphere. I myself would be considered a go-between. There, Yes, there are some specific issues within every specific, uh, specific racial ethnicity of men. Yes, there are those issues that they should work out for themselves. Those should be worked out in private. Then you have the actual manosphere where everybody can get together and compare notes. See, that's how it should go. But unfortunately, you have too many guys out here, particularly, you know, from the um, game spreader side who want to say, well, my way should be the gold standard. And that's why you get a lot of, um, 
you know, feather ruffling and a lot of essentially just BS beefs. How about this? You take the red pill, you understand, you go in whatever direction you want to go in. While you may not agree with how another man lives his life, it is his life. If you want to pay to play, do so. However, don't be dishonest about your decision. Now, insofar as the passport brothers, yeah, there are some guys who go over there explicitly to have sex with foreign women. I personally have absolutely zero problems with that. Now, Dennis Sperling, in his awesome video called Say Hello to the Bad Guy, he says, okay, and what? If you can sleep well at night, then guess what? It's not a bad decision. If it's with another consenting adult female, it's not a bad decision. End of. Why should anybody else worry about where another man puts his money and his penis? That is some severe pocket and penis policing. I think that's something that should be kept under wraps. If you're going to do it, be honest about it, but don't kiss and tell. Me, I have my waifus, but guess what? There's only two people, or excuse me, three people in my real life that knows about my waifu. The meat sack, of course, and two of my closest friends. But guess what? Beyond that, it's no one else's business. If you want to pump and dump, once again, what you do within the confines of your personal, you know, domicile, no one else needs to know about. Every decision, every choice has to be weighed by the individual who's going to make the choice all the risks and all the benefits. Once you've made those decisions, once you've performed your uh, cost benefit analysis, go with it and go with it proudly. The idea of, you know, no man, don't ever, we don't ever trick. Eh, shut the fuck up with that shit. That, that is a moot point. That is a very moot point. If you're dating, you're tricking. Pay to play, you're tricking. You got a girlfriend or you're married, whoo, ultimate tricking. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get off of here. Let me know what you guys think. And ladies, the power will eventually go out. Feminism and all of the avenues that you use to get turncoat blue pill men and true rabbit feminists to continue to throw shots at men who simply said, we no longer require your validation to make our lives better, we'll go out right along with it. As more and more men take the red pill, go their own way, and throw a big middle finger up as they're leaving the plantation. <laughs> That's all I got to say for this one. RPM, I am.